Coming up on Tech News Today, Apple fights for the developer, at least against Lotus. Everything's getting plussed these days. And Square lets you use your name as a credit card. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Monday, May 23rd, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, Mac, or TV instantly. Plus, get DVDs by mail and just about a business day. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Jason Howell. And it's good to be back. We are so happy to see you, Tom Merritt. Y'all did a great job while I was gone. Thank I you. almost didn't come back. But yeah. I needed the money. I feel like that every time I go to Canada <laughs> as well. You, you really enjoyed it? That yeah, much? I loved it. Montreal was fantastic. Uh, met up with Wayne, Wayne, who had emailed us and who buzz we out loud. Berated I actually for being uh, thorough. he was he was great. I met Fez and Luke. And you guys I, had a meetup. I shouldn't start naming names because I can't name everybody who was there. But it, yeah, it was about uh, I don't know 15, 20 people there. That's it was great. awesome. Yeah, Eileen had taken a video. It looked like a really fun time. Uh, we're glad that you had a great time, but we're also glad that you didn't like it enough to stay. I, uh, you know what? You. I, I need to brush up on my French first. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then Francais. En Francais. Mm-hmm. Uh, s'il vous plaît. Uh, oui. je, je suis américain, non, je parle pas français. Uh, parlez-vous anglais? Hmm. That's, that's all I needed to know. Yeah. <laughs> to get by. Mm-hmm. Which is exactly much why I all fails today. point to beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. En pint? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> Apple is sticking up for the developers who Lodesys uh, targeted last week. Uh, if you didn't catch that story, like me, I don't know, maybe you're out of the country. Uh, the developers were being sued by Lodesys directly because of the in-app payment system. Uh, and now Apple has stuck up on their behalf saying, hey, wait a minute, look. We have licensed to four patents with mm-hmm. Lodesys. That covers anybody who develops for the platform so back off. Well, I mean, we were wondering what Apple was going to do, and this makes sense. It's like, uh, how how could Lodesys be going after developers who are just using Apple's architecture? I mean, Apple has these patents. I, I'm I'm glad. I mean, it's Apple seems to be. If you read the entire um, the the letter, um, it's it sounds like Apple sort of like. All right, that should do it. Lodesys can go right off into the sunset, and that's the end of that. Uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what Lodesys says back. But. You know, uh, Neelai Patel on uh, on the uh, this is, this is my next blog, the blog to yet be named, mm-hmm. uh, mentioned that he bets that Apple and Google are both busily working on indemnification clauses for the developer agreements because this shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the, these these notices from Lodesys should have gone to Apple in the first place. Uh, Apple, and and that's the problem, is Apple can send this note. It was sent from Senior Vice President uh, of Legal Bruce Sewell to Lodesys CEO Mark Small. That tells you something right there. This was not a legal-to-legal communication. This was going right to the CEO saying, stop. Yeah. You need to stop this. Uh, but But legally, they can still go after individual developers and make each individual developer defend themselves in court. What's also interesting is that Apple, I'm sorry, Darren. No, I was just going to say, that would, you know, make developing for the platform absolutely prohibitive. If, if that was, you know, your business model is having those features that, you know, are under their license, I mean, you would, you would hope that the platform that you're uh, writing for that holds those licenses are, are then, you know, uh, transfers to you when you publish under that platform. So I think this is big guns, and I think this is maybe the last we'll see of loads us with this, but look for a, uh, a short news fuse item in the future about new indemnity clauses mm-hmm. being added to developer agreements. Possibly in a lot of different app stores. Maybe even the BlackBerry app store, uh, which is made by RIM, a Canadian company. Happy Victoria Day. Sony (laughs) estimates a $3.2 billion loss this year, uh, mostly because of the earthquake. They had expected to post an $857 million profit 
for the fiscal year 2011. Their fiscal year ended in March. Now they expect to post a $3.1 billion loss. I think Thursday is when we'll actually get their fiscal year numbers. Uh, the company estimated 17 billion yen, $208.1 million lost in operating income for fiscal year 2011 due to the recent earthquake. Uh, they also describe some incremental losses such as repair to st and structures and loss of inventory, although they think most of those will be co covered by insurance. The big money losing is going to be in fiscal year 2012. That's when they're expecting to lose 150 billion yen or $1.84 billion based on not being able to operate because of outages related to the earthquake. So their fiscal year, what, uh, ends in March? Yeah, I believe this year it ended March 11th, and okay. next year it ends March 12th. I could have those. Because I, I was looking at these numbers, and I'm like, well, why would the $1.84 billion loss be attributed to next year? But that's because we're in fiscal year 2012 now. Right, exactly. When the hack happens. Exactly. Well, th that's right. And the cost of the hack pales in comparison to the cost of the earthquake, but it's still pretty pretty meaty. 14 billion yen, that's $171.4 million. So, you know, three quarters of well, the of the uh, the loss of the earthquake from fiscal year 2011 mm -hmm. uh, but, is, is that number of the cost of the hack, and that number will probably rise as well. Oh, absolutely. It's just an early guess, and that's really only about $2, what was it, 77? Uh, yeah, around 2 bucks a, a subscriber. Yeah, yeah 77 uh, million accounts, so about 2 bucks a subscriber. I can't imagine that that number is going to, to stay where it is. Maybe they needed Well, keep in insurance. mind, too, that, I mean, Sony is still able to say, we don't think any credit card numbers were actually stolen. If it ends up coming out that that does happen, that numbers there's are identity way, theft, way, 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 then way there, I mean, these numbers are going to look paltry. Also, uh, Sony hack of the day, sonymusic.gr, <laughs> the Greek Sony BMG oh. site was hacked. Hacker News received a data dump from anonymous hackers and uploaded the database to Pastebin. Uh, it includes usernames, real names, and email addresses of users registered at sonymusic.gr. So the hits just keep on coming. It, I, I don't think the question is, did Anonymous have anything to do with this anymore? I think the hacker community in general, forget Anonymous, forget any even loosely organized group. The hacker mm -hmm. community in general said, we're pissed at Sony and their attitude toward GeoHots, yeah. and we're taking it out on them, and and snowballing now. Absolutely. And, you know, it looks like everybody's, you know, coming out of the woodworks. This right here, uh, not affiliated with the anonymous group, but an anonymous hacker that, uh, you know, looks like they just kind of pointed this tool called DB Autopone at, uh, at you know, some of Sony's uh, Greece sites until they found something. And SQL it injection SQL attack, injection right? attack. And it's not a really sophisticated attack, but hey, when you've got, you know, everybody pointed at you, any flaw is going to show. So, you know, maybe this will mean that uh, when Sony goes through every bit of IT that they have and, and uh, secure it, they might they might come out being well, we the most Thailand, secure. we had Thailand, Greece. Who's next? Yes. <laughs> we, we, we were talking Only to Jason. Scripts, we need no. to get a, a Sony hack of the week graphic right. uh, whipped together. Yeah. Because Some something, ominous something music. Something with a spinning dun, dun, dun. globe. And as, yeah. soon, as soon as you, like, spend all the time to do that, yeah. the hacks will stop. Oh, so, so, so Sony, on what you're Sony saying actually is, wants you to do that. is I will help everyone by creating that so it'll end. <laughs> yeah, so you'll, you'll help Sony. Yeah. Stop the insanity. Right. Help Sony. They need okay. it. Okay. All right. I'll yeah. work on a little drop for Quite you. Quite a loss. <laughs> uh, the third Foxconn worker uh, injured in an explosion last week has died. Uh, and there's some more information now coming from Foxconn, released an update about the explosion. Apparently, the cause of the explosion is a still under investigation, but they believe it was caused by the explosion of ultralight aluminum combustible dust in a duct. The dust is used to polish iPads, uh, and the explosion took place in the area of the factory where iPads are polished uh, to make them all shiny. The advocacy group says, listen, this was not an accident. Um, this is uh, negligence on the part of Foxconn. Yeah, we went in and there and told them. Students and Scholars Against Corporate Misbehavior, or SACOM, uh, said in, on May, I think it was like May 6th, uh, this dust is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean... It, According to the advocacy group, it's sort of like Foxconn just didn't care, didn't do anything about it. I mean, it may have been in the pipeline. We got to address this issue and it just didn't happen fast yeah, enough. I mean, I don't think we can say that someone at Foxconn is like, I wanted this to happen. This is not an accident. This is, a, you know, on purpose. It was just a extremely unfortunate case of 
uh, they sh- should have cleaned this up. Right, and this is in addition to, I mean, Foxconn, who is now getting a rap for, you know, having employees that commit suicide now that they're, you know, n- to the point where they're actually uh, required to sign an agreement that, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, you know, next of kin or parents won't uh, sue the company for, you know, additional damages if they do commit suicide. I mean, the, the, the company that has supposedly nets around their facility so that workers don't, you know, off themselves. And it's just, this is not adding to their reputation whatsoever. Yeah, that's like putting uh, nets on a bridge. It doesn't stop people from committing suicide. It just calls, it just, calls attention to it. Yeah, it, it, it just it, it stops people from committing suicide in that particular way. Mm-hmm. I also wonder how many um, of the companies that Foxconn um, manufactures um, units for, Apple, HP, Dell, for example, I mean, how much should they be aware of, of what Foxconn needs to do to get their production plants up to working code? Well, and that's what SACOM is taking them to task for, is saying, look, you guys are signing off on this, saying uh, we've put pressure on them, they've changed everything, everything's all right, and it's not all right. There's not adequate protection. Right. Uh, there's still forced overtime in order to get the higher wage that was instituted. They did a 30% across the board mm-hmm. uh, pay raise, but then they started making people work more hours, al- allegedly. Uh, and, and they call it a military-style management. Uh, so, you know, Foxconn has been controversial for a while, and this is just making it worse. Uh, it's making it more and more controversial. I mean, people don't realize this kind of metal dust, this isn't just a you know an inhalation issue, as this incident points out. Uh, it's very volatile. It's especially a, an aluminum is flammable. Uh, so this is, you know, this is, this is a dangerous job. And if it were in any other country, well, maybe not any other country, but if we're in many other countries, it would be treated with strict regulations. Right. Right. It's, it's easy to not think about, you know, what actually goes into it when you're unboxing that pretty new iPad or yeah. whatever it may be from yeah. Apple. Yeah. Han Hai, the parent company of Foxconn's chairman, uh, Terry Gao, meanwhile said that the explosion would not cause production delays for the iPad 2. Um, which Wonderful. is the wrong response, yes. uh, at least for, from a public relations standpoint. I guess it's good for investors to know that, but it, it means that, oh, we can whip people into shape. Don't, don't let an explosion in three deaths bother you. Yeah, I mean that... We won't miss a beat. Yeah. We control these people. Exactly. This episode of Tech News Today, what's the name of the show again? Tech T- News Today? TNT, Tech huh? News Today. This episode of Buzz Out Tech News that Today. That show that Tom <laughs> used to be on. Explosive show. The real deal is brought to you by Netflix. Uh, Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, and that saves you time, money, and hassle. You can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed directly to your PC or Mac, uh, and they have it in Canada, so Canadians can get Netflix, as well as... Americans. So if you're doing nothing on Victoria Day, or maybe next year, if, next week, if you're in the U.S. on Memorial Day, you might want to just pop it in and watch a movie. Uh, you can watch the original Face Off, not the John Travolta one, but the one about hockey. Okay, I was about to say, because you don't want to watch the other one. I don't know if you want to watch the other one Probably or not. Probably don't. But the Face Off about hockey is not bad. Uh, anyway, you, well, you the could, face off of John Travolta is really bad. Yeah. So the hockey one, I, I would watch. But what's great about Netflix is you could just totally give that a negative rating, and then if we were friends on Netflix, you would know not to watch it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also, Anvil, the story of Anvil. Hey, that's actually a really, really good documentary. Is it really? I have yes, heard. It's awesome. I have heard. It's very well done. You can it's about get an it. 80s heavy, heavy metal band. It's you totally can get it streaming awesome. right now on Netflix. Try it out uh, right now. 30 days for free. Thanks to being a Tech News Today listener, you just got to go to netflix.com slash twit and sign up right now. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. On to more. Do we do more stories? God, it seems like we've done a lot of stories already, This, but we keep doing stories. the show isn't over? Wow. Well, let's plow through some stories. Google is blocking Android market movie rentals on rooted devices because of copy protection. So here's the deal. Google came out with their new movie rental system. It's only available in the 3.1 edition of Honeycomb, which you can only get on the Motorola Zoom right now, but it is rolling out to other devices uh, over the next couple of months. You can watch Netflix streaming on these devices. Uh, mm-hmm. You can watch Hulu on mm-hmm. these devices. I be- Is that right? You know... That, Actually, I don't know about the Hulu. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I, what I was just thinking. But is, you can watch other drm video streams on these like devices. Like a movie on iTunes. Like... A, well, you can't, uh, not on an Android device. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know where you're going yeah, with that. Yeah. I know where you're going with that, though. <laughs> Maybe uh, if you rip the DRM and then if, put it on. If you were to jailbreak an iPhone, you could still watch the DRM movies that you buy right. on iTunes. I'm kind of thinking of what the I can do with being, my iPhone. The point being, just rooting a device does not 
take away the ability to watch DRM's content. So this is because of a licensing agreement. Google says you'll get an error 49 message if you attempt to play a movie on a rooted device. Rooted devices are currently unsupported due to requirements related to copyright protection. Well, I mean, obviously, because, you know, when pirates want to get copies of movies, they, you know, legitimately buy them through, you know, an Android system, play them on their phone. And if they have a rooted phone, then they find some way to record it there. I mean, they're not getting them from, like, the movie studios or anything like that. It's really, I mean, I think it's funny. There's an Engadget article about this that has, like, 1,200 comments. I mean, people are enraged about this. And it's like, I don't really think, I mean, it's, it's all about well, it's how Google has marketed this, right? Bingo. Right. Yeah, or the lack of. Because it's it's leading people to believe, well, listen, you're not supposed to do this, so it's out of our hands. But it's like, well, that's not really true. And it's also, Android's an open platform, so really, right. you should be able to do whatever you want with it, right? Yeah. So that's the problem is that Google hasn't been, at least in the eyes of many people, upfront with, this is, the, uh, this is the agreement that we made with these folks. This is what we have to do. Sorry. There are other avenues that you can go down if that's your bag. But this particular um, uh, YouTube app... Um, it just won't, you know. Well, and this is a service that Google's tried to get off the ground. And they're basically saying, look, if you uh, are the kind of person who wants to take more control over our open platform, we're not going to let you give us money for things. And you know what? That has been the case before. I mean, think about Linux and the DVD. Think about, you know, even just Linux and lots of online streaming services where they just expect you, you know, they like have a Windows Media plugin or a, or a plugin for a Mac. And then you're like, Crickets, crickets. I run Gen 2. This, like, is this is all perception. This is the same thing that makes people take longer routes to work because they don't have to hit as many stop lights. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's a perception issue of like, oh, I don't like waiting at a stoplight, so I'm going to take a shortcut, which actually makes me take a longer way to get there. The, the, the industry feels like if they don't slap DRM on everything, then they're losing control and piracy will increase. When the fact of the matter is, piracy is unaffected. Copyright infringement is unaffected by DRM. And all they do in these cases is piss off people who are trying to behave honestly. And this is, once again, another example of that. Uh, all you're doing here is saying, hey, those of you who rooted your phone but are still trying to play by the rules and pay for your content, forget it. Go pirate it instead. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes you, like, this added to the existing problem of the fragmentation of Android. You know, 2.3.4 and 3.5, oh, what? I just want to watch some content. And if, you know, like... To put together, say, I don't know, like a, a flow ch sheet of like what phone do you have, have you rooted it or not, what services are available to you. To put together like a flow chart like that to where you know what content you can get, you'd probably need like a 40-inch plotter or something, you yeah. know. I mean, like, to make matters worse, too, it's like, okay, so let's say you rooted your device, you try to play a movie. Uh, it's not even that Google has like a nice page saying, here's the deal. You get something called Error 49. And then you have to go into the support documentation just to find out what error 49 is. Error 49 means you're a criminal. That's what <laughs> but it's it like, means. can you imagine? I mean, if you weren't yeah. reading the text, you'd be like, what is that? Error Why is 49? my phone broken? Oh, gosh, makes yeah. no sense. Well, and the way they detail it, too, they, they say due to requirements related to copyright protection, almost sounds like it's a hardware requirement right. when, in fact, it's not. And also, I mean, the, the unfortunate other side to this, at least unfortunate for Google, is the fact that, you know, if, if it's between rooting your phone and doing what you want with it or the movie service, I doubt most of those people that rooted their phones are going to unroot their phone yeah. just so that they can get movies through this and pay for them. No. So that's yeah. not going to happen. Right. Our next story, uh, I think you should also make another bumper for uh, Amazon <laughs> tablet rumors. Okay. It's, it's time for Amazon tablet oh, rumors. Man, I'm going to be busy. This one coming from uh, Silicon Valley analyst Tim Beharin, uh claims to have some inside information from sources in Taipei confirming to him that there will be two tablets from Amazon coming. A 10-inch tablet should hit before the holidays, and then a 7-inch model is also planned and would use NVIDIA's quad-core Tegra system on a chip. Amazon apparently wanted to use a switchable black-and-white e-ink-like display and a color LCD, uh, but neither Qualcomm nor Pixel Key would be ready with that kind of display in time for this round of tablets, but that's something you might see in a future round of Amazon tablets. Yeah, I mean, so we're already moving on to rumors for the next round of Amazon tablets. You know, I thought, it, like, reading the story, I was like, ooh, quad core goodness, and then, like, Forget that, man. Really? I want I want that e-ink that switches into an LCD. I'm imagining the same panel, like double-paned, kind of, you know, when the LCD, when the color LCD is off, there's e-ink behind it, some sort of mashup like that. 
That sounds really That's, exciting. I had the same reaction. It's like, well, too bad it won't be in time for the holidays, but we're going to get an LCD e-ink display. Yay! Yeah. Next year, maybe even the year after, as long as it's coming. I'm excited. It'll, be, it'll come from Apple and iPad 3. Don't worry. Cool. Uh, speaking of Apple, uh, Apple's Mac growth in the enterprise is getting a lot of attention. Uh, according to an analyst, Charlie Wolf uh, with Needham & Company, Mac sales in the enterprise during Apple's last fiscal quarter grew a whopping 66% significantly outpacing the rest of the PC market. The rest of the PC market grew just 4.5% in the enterprise. Everyone talks about Mac just being a consumer brand, uh, but this has got people all excited saying, hey, Apple's going to take over enterprise too. Apple's going to take over everything. That's how they talk, people. Do they? they? say that, yeah. Apple fans do. Um, well, you know how the Apple stores are now going to have iPads displaying right. the, uh, the uh, prices of everything in instead of a piece of paper? So there you go. I mean, rampant in an enterprise. <laughs> so you're saying <laughs> their, their increase <laughs> in the enterprise is all based on at their own location? Uh, on, their, yeah. on their retail store 2.0s or whatever they're well, calling them. That's a good them. point. I mean, yeah. you, when you go to conferences, you see iPads as inexpensive like kiosks at booths and stuff you know to, to like you know enter in your information to be you know instead of like the old popular business card in the fishbowl or something like that it's uh you know ca the the point of capturing of information is like an ipad or an ipod touch or something like that yeah you see that but in restaurants I, I think and they're cash talking registers about, but that's not really what they mean yeah they're talking about max here but yeah. and then it's interesting to think about that and like the halo effect of everybody that's like ooh, i like my connected universe where my iphone and my ipad are so cool so maybe well, just Pre back. Preston Grala at, at Computer World pointed out, Max still only account for 3% of total sales to businesses. Mm -hmm. So 66%. I mean, if you go from selling one thing to two, you can say you grew 100%. <laughs> but it doesn't mean you're taking over the industry. Yeah, th this uh, three, as, as Preston wrote it, 3% does not a juggernaut make. It's practically a rounding error. Yeah. He also pointed out back in 1997 that Mac posted... 3% of sales to businesses. So since 1997, no the growth. percentage has been flat. Right. You know, this coming from the company that has just continued their server line. You know, the servers that they yeah, sell right. to businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Xserve uh, was, was sunset uh, yeah. this year. And so. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar with their SAN offerings. I think we are seeing more businesses putting Apple laptops into the enterprise, mm -hmm. uh, I, I do, and I think obviously we're going to see iPhones and iPads being used in the enterprise, but I don't see Apple taking over the enterprise. Yeah, well, I don't think it's. I don't like, think Apple is interested in taking no, over the I enterprise. No, I don't think either. it's in their best interest. Either. I don't think it's the Apple innovations that are responsible for that either. It's not the fact that you know there's an app store on Apple that you see increased growth and you know more more people using like uh, power. Or what are they called? Um, MacBook Pros. I almost said PowerBooks. Um, in the enterprise, I think it's more to do with, I don't know, VMware? Yeah, because you can actually run multiple. I mean, that's why I have a You know, a, there's a, a VMware Mac. app. I can run. Oh, iOS. All right, all right. No, so, all the pen testers I know use uh, use MacBook Pros. Cause, you well, know, I, can, I can run Linux. I can run Windows. Mm -hmm. I can run OS X, all native, legally, without yeah. having to do any hacking. And I can run everything in uh, virtualization as well. So, All right, finally, uh, Jack Dorsey who is, what, he's some, got some weird title at Twitter. He's like a glorified product manager, like yeah, yeah. chief Poobah product manager or something. But he also is still the CEO of Square, right? Uh, which is the company that allows you to take credit card payments on an iPhone mm -hmm. with an iOS app. Uh, Square introducing two new services that are complementary called Card Case and Square Register. This is different than the pen registers that <laughs> yeah, you were yeah. talking about, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, card Case uh, is for users to eventually be able to use an app to order uh, things from, say, restaurants or stores and pay for things in stores. Square Register is a way to handle those kinds of transactions as a vendor, as, as, an, as a person who runs a store. So, for instance, uh, you go to Blue Bottle Coffee uh, or, let's say, Cafe Marriott in Montreal, uh, and you swipe Drink. your credit card. The receipt is emailed to you. You leave your card on file with Square. The next time you go to Cafe Myriad, you don't have to have your card with you. You can just browse the menu on the app, make your order, and pay, and they'll get it on their Square register, and you don't have to hand them anything. It's all done wirelessly through the Square service. What I think is beautiful about this is, okay, the iPad becomes the register, 
And you know, you, you go to, you've been to those places where they use like that old school lampshade iMac as like the register or, com- or mm-hmm. different computers as a register. And it's like, why do you, what's a computer anymore? I love the idea of, of using an iPad in that fashion. I was just talking about how they're used as kiosks in, uh, in trade shows. It's like they're so inexpensive and versatile. And it's all about trusting the company, right? Because for anybody who's like, well, I don't want to have my credit card stored somewhere. It's like, well, Amazon has my credit card information. Right. When I want to buy something, I trust Sony Amazon. Sony had my credit card information. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> and you know how well that doesn't work. Right. But yeah, um, I mean, the whole point is that as long as uh, they have a, a, a trustworthy base of folks that are, are using uh, Square's services, this just makes a lot of sense. The whole idea of, you know, the little dongle that you connect to your phone and then swiping the card, it's cool, but it's like it was sort of the first step. Yeah. It's, it's good for, um, like, uh, small business, yeah. small merchants, yeah. people, vendors at concerts and stuff. It's, it's great for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I just used it at the ma- uh, Maker Fair uh-huh. over the weekend. It was really cool. They've got, like, the Etsy folks or whatever uh, yeah. s- selling crafts, and, you know, everybody's there with their little iPad or whatever um, taking uh, taking credit cards. It's really cool. I I don't know. I'm just really ex- wondering, like, this is what you can do with technology today, but I still think that when it comes to revolutionizing purchases, NFCs are kind of the direction that the industry is going. So it's I'm sure not that will adapt quickly, to that. Though. Well, not yeah. very quickly. And I'm sure, I'm sure Square that's... will get into the NFC business oh, yeah, as soon as it's ready, uh, as mm-hmm. soon as there are enough people using it. This is a way that you can reach a lot more people right away. Yeah, at first when I was reading it, I was like, that sounds really cumbersome. Well, it might be a little bit cumbersome the first time. Only the first time, But then yeah. you've got a tab. But it's no if, more cumbersome the first time than it is uh, to just pay with a credit card. Yeah. And like you say, then you're running, they call it running a tab because it's like running a tab at a bar. You just, you know, they, the thing is, do you trust Square to store that information? Because, and that's true of anything, any of these payment systems, you know, PayPal, NFC, anybody, even your bank, do you trust them with your money? Okay, so I probably should have brought this up when we were talking about the um, the Sony story. But one of the things that I feel coming out of all of these like major hacks, like the Sony one, is that you know companies need there needs to be a standardized way for companies to disclose to you how they treat your information. Is it's stored in plain text? I know one bank in particular that stores all of their passwords like the, the, it's a eight character maximum. Hello? Maximum. Maximum. Eight, okay. Yeah. Another one that's 20 character. Uh, a lot of times when you see those maximums, things are being stored in plain text in the database. And uh, the other question is, is it being hashed? Is it being hashed with some salt? That is to say, is it, you know, is it, uh, is it really secure? And, um, and are there, is there, are there the should be card, like a badge. Are the credit card number, uh, numbers encrypted? Yes. That's uh, what which, I want to know. Which Sony says they were. And mm-hmm. Sony says they were hashing the uh, Yeah, but the, I don't want to find passwords. out after the fact. Yeah, I, right. I don't even want to go into, you know, um, a, a relationship with a business where I don't know up front. And I'm not pouring through some, some mm-hmm. legalese uh, privacy policy. There should be some sort of, like, standardized badge. Like, you see that VeriSign badge and, like, mm-hmm. you know, trusted hacker secure, like, GIF files or GIF files on, on websites. There should be some sort of a thing like that that says, there you should know, be this a- is what we use. We shop 256 your stuff. You know, not yeah. we we put your stuff in DES. With that no should salt. be a, an open alliance where you know everybody agrees to to sign off on on what these things should be. Some security experts. That that would be a great thing. It's like the FDIC. Yeah, that's of, yeah. that's like something that should be like rolled into DNSSEC or something like that. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Anyway, we'll I'll get address. on that square. <laughs> Thanks. Do that for us. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. On to the news fuse. According to a source at Digitimes, Apple's next iPhone will have unicorns and babies. No, it's going to have a curved glass display. That's the latest rumor. This is based on Apple buying over 200 glass cutting machines, which we're guessing are for iPhone screens. Apparently, the yield rate for the machines are not satisfactory yet. Once Apple figures out how this stuff should work, all the machines will be online. But don't expect the iPhone 5 any sooner than the rumored September launch, at least if you believe this rumor about that rumor. Uh, more on Apple. The Apple Store app, uh, there is that app actually, and it got an update. You can fire up the app now and you can order a Mac built to your very own specifications. Previously, you could only pick stock configurations, which was, at least for some people, kind of limiting. If you're using the Apple Store app in a brick and mortar Apple Store, you'll be able to find out when the next available Genius Bar appointment is or when the next in store workshop is scheduled. So it could be really helpful. The Apple also allows you to request help from a customer service rep in the store. Unfortunately, no Steve Jobs soundboard built in yet. Jason? Would you like to maybe work on that? Okay. okay uh, great. That's uh, what, 10, 
10 different drops and sounds that I'm working on right now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah. should be a I, problem. I'm on it. Yeah. Let me know. I'm working some... on it right Thank now, actually, so while much. we're doing the show. Appreciate so. that. I'll fire up After Effects with you after the show. All right, It'll cool. be good. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try to do this news fuse bit without screaming. Techno Buffalo is reporting details about the Droid 3. Nope. Is I know that, that a Jason, scream? Yeah, that's Can't a scream. I know Jason Howell is super excited about this because it's going to have a 4-inch QHD display. That's 960 by 540, folks. 540. Um, 540. It's got a, 540, yo. Stop it's, screaming. It's got a slider keyboard yeah, with a dedicated row for number keys. That's super helpful. It might be powered by an NVIDIA Tegra 2. And the, the uh, Droid 3 is going to have a front-facing camera as well as an 8-megapixel uh, shooter on the back. And those cameras are totally going to come in handy when you take a picture of your disappointed face and find out that it, Droid 3 doesn't support LTE. Oh, those are all rumors, though. It will support unicorns, though. Although I will say, looking at the screenshot, doesn't the uh, the top part resemble the new iPhone, the iPhone 4? Kind yeah, of? it yeah. does. They it's just very... glued an iPhone 4 yeah. to the top of the keyboard for that picture. Yeah, but the it's a smartphones are like cars, you know? Yeah. They all just look the same now. Yeah. HP's Eric Kador, he's the Senior Vice President of Personal Systems Group Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Fun to say at cocktail parties when he introduces himself. <laughs> Says the HP touchpad will unseat the Apple iPad as king of tablets. Speaking at a press conference, Kador said, in the tablet world, we're going to become better than number one. We call it number one plus. Ugh. I'm Eric Kador, Senior Vice President, Personal Systems Group, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Nice to meet you. If he's going to talk like that, he is not invited to my dinner party. You're number one light. <laughs> <laughs> and we're plus. Hulu Plus is locking arms with TiVo Premier for TV streaming. In other words, TiVo Premier has access to Hulu Plus starting today. The standard $8 a month rate still applies, but TiVo is running a deal where if you buy TiVo Premier from its site between now and August 30th, you'll get a six-month free trial to Hulu Plus. If you already have a Premier, you can get one month of Hulu Plus absolutely free. Yay. Squee. Amber, <laughs> Amber, I'm sorry, we were talking about, uh, uh, Darren, yes, get a grip. Okay, <laughs> grips have been gotten. Ashton uh, Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher, that's what I was thinking about. See, I was just trying to punk you, huh? You anyway, punched me. I totally you punked you. You punched me so hard. The celebrity who ar <laughs> <laughs> that arguably made Twitter mainstream is launching his own Twitter app. Ashton Kutcher is teaming up with Uber Media to build A+, which is an <sighs> Adobe Air app, which will uh, have content channels chosen by Kutcher. Uh, Uber Media has dabbled with celebrity crossovers before. It's had a, uh, a special Uber social theme for the rapper 50 Cent. And the next version will be called A plus K. Oh. Will it be available on the HP touchpad and be number one plus? <laughs> number one oh, plus K. Holzer, Holzer, and Fistel. That sounds like a law firm. And in <laughs> fact, it is. And based in Atlanta, Georgia, they just announced they are investigating RIM for potential violations of U.S. securities law. The investigation revolves around whether RIM adequately disclosed that it was having problems with an aging product line. Law firm is encouraging RIM stockholders to contact them so they all can make a boatload of cash. I mean, wait, so the law firm can make a boatload of cash because you won't get anything out of it. Uh, Nisho is bringing its big screen glasses free HGTV to Japan today and will be available for the low, low, low price of 1.7 million yen. Oh, wait, that can't be much in American dollars. No, it's dollars, not actually. Right? It's uh, only about 21,000 American dollars. That's a lot. Yeah. How much is that Canadian? I don't know. It's like 23,000. Canada's hard. No. Uh, the 52 inch display is marketed as 2D plus depth. Everything is plus today. It's like 2D it's plus. Drink Expect to see this thing plus. as, you know, like a business display or or just, you know, in the homes of really rich people, that kind of thing. 21K, it's, that's a lot of cash. Oh, yeah, I went the other way. It's 19K Canadian. It's cheaper there because they drink again. They have, you're going to be really drunk. On to the, our unnamed uh, extra story segment. <laughs> Insert name here. Maybe we'll call it that. The <laughs> unnamed extra story segment. Maybe we just should call it a kicker. How about the I mean, segment formerly known as Kicker? Yeah. Well, or just, you know what? Today's is actually is a kicker. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, the creator of the Great Firewall of China was reportedly pelted with shoes and eggs. Oh, this really is a kicker. During a visit to Wuhan University last week, Fang Bingqing was hit by one of the Nike trainers flung by an anonymous protester whose actions have uh, been met with a groundswell of online support, but probably also by a, a lot of repression from the police. Uh, I regard the dirty abuse as a sacrifice for my country, 
He said at the time, Fang has been exposed to attack from netizens in China before. Last December, he decided to close a blog after the site attracted waves of negative comment. The egg missed him, by the way. Mm. But, but the, got, first the first got shoe him. got him. Yeah. yeah. yeah this, is, uh, this is just a gesture of complete contempt in the Arab world, as uh, George Bush found out in December of 08. Right. And don't forget Bill Gates getting hit with a pie. Oh, pies. Is, well, that's more of a geek. Yeah. Geek thing. Yeah. I bet he would have got hit by, by a shoe. But I'm sure Arab geeks feel the same way we do about the pie. I mean, not only does it represent, you know, an insult, but it would hurt. Shoe pie. Yeah. Oh, shoe it thrown at my face. Yeah. Ow. Especially if it's like, you know. Certainly not shoe big pie. Big old sturdy Oxford. Just an FYI. I'll, t- I'll take the pie. Please. I will eat the yeah, pie. I will take the pie. The Even shoe, if it's thrown it, in my face. Is it, what if it's made of shoes? No, not okay. a shoe pie. Yeah, would not eat a shoe pie. On to the, oh, oh uh, real quickly before we get to the calendar, actually, uh, I want to thank Restoration Hardware who are helping to provide uh, the furnishings in our, For new, our new newsroom. In our new newsroom over in the, uh, in the new studio. Uh, that Restoration Hardware is bringing its entire product assortment to the iPad. So if you would Sweet. like to go shopping and buy the very same furniture you will see in our new studio, uh, you can do it by the uh, Restoration Hardware app, now available free of charge at the iTunes App Store. That's so awesome. I love Restoration Hardware. They make good stuff. We're going to be uh, newsing in style. Amtrucker has curtains in the place where he lives that are from Restoration Hardware. I bet he doesn't even know that. Wow. Which is your old house. Yeah, that's why I know. We're all related. Yeah. All of us. We're all Canadian. (laughs) And cousins. Drink again. All of this has happened before, and all of it will happen again. On to the calendar. Oh, well, that was really quiet. (laughs) Quiet calendar. It's Monday. Let's take it slow. Turn it down. T-Mobile's launching new individual and family plans right on schedule. Uh, they range from about 70 bucks for 200 megabytes of data plan to 120 for 10 gigabytes. 200 megabytes, not very much, but 70. You know, might be, might, the price might be right for you. Kobo has unveiled a Wi-Fi Touch Edition e-reader. The price is $129.99. Ain't bad. Or $130 if you round up by a penny. Amazon is selling digital downloads of Born This Way, which is Lady Gaga's newest album, now, the reason I am saying this, because you might not be a Gaga fan, but they are selling the entire album for 99 cents. And it gets you the 20 gigabytes upgrade of Amazon's locker for free. And I feel like this is a good time to admit that you bought Lady Gaga's album for but 99 it's cents. It's a good time for you to out me <laughs> that I did. I don't care about the album, but this is the cheapest album that I will be able to buy. Right. And I get the 20 gig. So I basically got the 20 gig upgrade for a dollar. For a dollar. How yeah. could you not care about that, Tom, huh? Oh, my God. I hope for her mother's sake she wasn't born that way (laughs) on a motorcycle because that would hurt. (laughs) Good stuff. She just looks angry, you know. I was born this way. I'm a bike, for God's sake. I was born as a bike. (laughs) I'm sorry, Mama. Why did this happen to me? (laughs) Moving on, Barnes & Noble will announce their new e-reader. That's tomorrow, Tuesday, May 24th. Um... Also tomorrow, Microsoft is previewing their new next major Windows phone. 500 new features, says Steve Ballmer. Features, features. Oh, oh you, you sure you features. mean li- lines of code? 500 more features. Lines of- oh, okay. For that. Yeah, 500 features. Each <laughs> feature, a feature is a new line of code. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of them is semicolon. <laughs> Verizon's rolling out LTE coverage in 21 additional markets on June 16th. Tom, you had pointed out to me that one of those markets is Salt Lake City. Yeah, Nerdtacular is on June 17th, so perfect timing. Perfect timing indeed. Uh, And then Ken Callahan in the chat room points out, I could have gotten an album of rain sounds for 89 cents. (laughs) I'm getting that one. Had no idea. Link me. All right. On to our calls. 260 TNT show. That is the phone number. Or you can email an attached uh, audio file if you like. Uh, But we have a call here from our Google line with an idea for naming our kicker segment. Hey, TNT crew. This is Trevor Marino calling from Houston, Texas. And I am the Kung Fu Drafter. And I was thinking about your show segment name. If TNT is an explosive, then obviously the bits at the end can only be shrapnel. So just call it the TNT shrapnel. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So we won't always have a kicker every day. So it can't be a daily, like the daily shrapnel. Right. But I like the idea of it being little, being named after little bits. Could sound a little, you know, Uh, a little violent. But it really related to TNT. It's true. How about body parts? Our show is dynamite. <laughs> is that better? <laughs> limbs. Skin. CNT limbs. Canada, Skin you particles. can have them back. A cell. A cell. 
<laughs> All right, let's move on to the email. Hello, TNT crew. This one is from Luz. I was watching episode 247, and you talked about the idea of Facebook Junior. I believe something like this is extremely essential to a child's experience on the Internet. Being a 13-year-old myself, I've gone through many years of not being able to do anything on the Internet except for playing a few games, and I personally don't enjoy doing that. I ended up, at about age 10, signing up for a Gmail account, and then I went on to Twitter and Facebook, and I always lied about my age. I'd rather have been able to tell the truth about my age and be marketed to accordingly. Love the show. I like this. I'll also, by the way, I saw Wayne, who had written in about Facebook to us and Buzz Out Loud. Saw him. I got to meet him in Montreal. He's very nice. More drinks. Uh, I'm he glad. he supports uh, this thirteen-year-old's opinion, and and I think Luz makes a really good point, which is don't force me to break the rules. And of course, Zuckerberg obviously agrees. Yes. He wants to mine all of these little tiny people for all the data he can get. Exactly. I mean, you a 10-year-old kid, they want to be on Facebook. It's like With the proper safeguards and sure. responsible oversight, I think they should be allowed. There we you got an it. email here from Patrick Beja. He writes, hey, guys, oh. first, welcome oh, back, oh. Tom. We missed you. Please welcome back, Tom. Everyone, everyone give Tom a hug to convey the fact that we missed him. Okay, with that out of the way. During last week's discussion about the rise of Apple malware, uh, I was surprised that no one in the tech community mentioned anything about the Mac App Store. Sacre bleu. Many valid points were made, uh, but nothing was said about the fact that an App Store-driven uh, OS would be much less susceptible to attacks. Indeed, if only App Store-signed applications were installed, it makes the system that much more secure. <laughs> Of course, this wouldn't happen tomorrow, but Apple doesn't drink its own Kool-Aid, meaning um, that they, <laughs> meaning that um, the Macs, you know, they, they know Macs aren't inherently secure, and they realize that they'll become a bigger target as they gain popularity. This is probably on the plus side of things, and it's planned call, uh, to make the uh, uh, Apple Store only Mac OS for dummies. It would be perfect, and uh, that it would probably help keep it more secure than their Windows browser. All right, so what do you think of this uh, Frenchman's <laughs> idea? <laughs> Bonne idée or de shit? What do those mean? One means a uh, good idea. The other means trash. Um. Oh, trusted computing. I, I, How I, I think, like to read I you. think it's an interesting idea, but yeah. the idea of saying you could only install things through the, uh, the App Store... I think it's it's more than this it would, shit. It would be like right. I think it's demerred. It would be like having an OS where you can only get the things through like a, a marketplace, for example. But then if you wanted some things that weren't officially supported through it, you would have to go and I don't know root your device. <laughs> yeah, see, and no. then and then you would want to get the like streaming service or the movie service, and then be like, oh no, we can't give you that because you went outside the norms. I don't, I don't, I don't like it in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you, when you want to get more secure, you lose your rights, and right. I don't like that. No. Uh, and finally, Andre from Sweden uh, wrote in and pointed out that in Sweden there's a weekly radio show called what's roughly translated the Digit Chart, a uh, standard radio chart show. What's been neat about it is it included statistics from streaming music services, mainly Spotify, since they're huge in Sweden. But just recently, Apple suddenly decided it didn't want to play that game, so they've said they will stop delivering iTunes Store t statistics as long as Spotify statistics are in there, too. Uh, from what we've gathered by indirect means and through phone calls, it has to do that we in Sweden, as one of the first countries in the world, have included streaming music in the chart, and that didn't go well with Apple's thoughts on how to create a chart. That, according to Ludwig Werner, CEO of Swedish uh, IFP, which is the recording industry, in an interview with the Swedish National Radio. Apple Sweden declined to comment. Uh, Andre says, I personally don't get the reasoning behind this or even what Apple may have to gain from doing this. Uh, I think they want Spotify to not have... A direct effect on the charts because the charts have a direct effect on sales yeah well and if somehow it ever shows that people are using spotify uh instead of apple you know they don't want to be lumped in watching spotify's usage grow well because yeah because it's like it's like having ratings right if you're uh, I, re I remember this from radio. When we were listed in R&R, &R, when we reported our chart to R&R, &R, mm -hmm. the record companies rang the phone off the hook trying to get us to play their music and sending us free copies of the CDs for us to play. When, when we weren't in radio and records, when I first took over as a program director, 
we had a hard we had a couple people would call us back we had a hard time getting cooperation even getting demo cds to play mm -hmm. so this is the same thing basically if spotify shows up in the charts spotify gets a lot more attention from the recording industry uh and itunes doesn't want it that way itunes wants to have all of the the uh attention they're a little worried. It sounds like somebody mm -hmm. is a little worried that somebody else might be on their heels and says, we don't want to be in the same sentence as them, or we just won't we'll play at all. Yep. All right. Uh, and don't forget about the bricks. If you want to help Remember us the move into our new Twit studios a little faster uh, and leave an indelible mark of your name on a brick that will be in our reception area, go to bricks.twit.tv and buy yourself a brick right now and know that you helped build the studio put your name one on it. inspirational false brick quote. facing <laughs> at a time bricks.twit.tv thanks for your help if you do buy us one we really appreciate it and thanks to everybody uh who filled in last week darren sarah Iaz, uh randall brian brushwood uh you guys did a great job it's great to be back though i missed you guys thanks tom good to have you and happy Victoria Day to everyone in Canada. Happy Vicky Day. Yay. Hack 5 still happening? You got a new I, show, dude, too, we just, right? Yeah, we just launched a new one. We're calling it Hack 5 Plus. It's going to be magical. <laughs> it's actually called Hack Tip, and it's like Shark and Fry Teen Ninjas. So check it out. H-A-K, the number 5.org is where you can find it. And it's little uh, twice-weekly, five-minute kind of one-topic, uh, you know, bone up on your IT stuff. This week, we're, or I guess Monday, we're talking about uh, standard input and output in uh, Unix. It's good All stuff. Right. Good stuff. Twit.tv slash TNT is our address on the web. You can give us a call, as I mentioned, 260-TNT-SHOW, or email us. Our electronic mail address is TNT at twit.tv. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Canada.